Ravi Kanpat is joining us uh, in studio this morning to discuss expectations from Axis this time around. So to start with, as Varun said, huge, uh, you know, predictions, uh, varied predictions. What what do you sense, uh, Ravi Kanpat? Yes, well, I agree. I mean, there's, I think, a, a significant variance as far as analyst estimates are concerned. Uh, what we would really be tracking uh, is, is not exactly the profit number mm -hmm. because uh, we don't know how the DTA really gets adjusted. But uh, let's look at the operating profit also, where, as, as Varun mentioned, uh, the consensus seems to be placing the operating profit at around 55, 56 billion. And we are at 53 billion uh, uh, as far as our estimates are concerned. Uh, so so that's that's the number that one should track. Uh, NIM, again, we are not expecting. Uh, so, the, so, so the NIM for Axis Bank has been stuck in the 3.4 to 3.5% range. 3.47% uh, was uh, the recent peak. And uh, so they have been in that range. Uh, one should expect, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to see the NIM around, uh, around those levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, I mean, in recent times, uh, the term deposit composition has been rising, and which, to an extent, has 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 impacted. Uh, you know, uh, would be impacting the uh, net interest margins. Uh, but uh, I would be fine if if they remain in uh, around uh, you know 3.4 percent levels. Uh, Coming to slippages, mm -hmm. uh, again slippages I think uh, the estimates tend to vary quite a bit. Uh, we were looking at more normalized number. So in first quarter we had slippages which were uh, 48 billion, uh, contributed a lot by uh, corporate slippages also. And uh, the management commentary did mention that uh, there tends to be a bump up in Q1 every year. Uh, so uh, in Q2, we are looking at a more normalized trend. We are not looking specifically how the retail or corporate will move, but uh, talking of a you know broad slippage number, we are, we are expecting 32 billion slippages. Uh, irrespective of the numbers today, do you think the stock will remain capped because they've drained capital? One via the QIP route, and then I think it's the ETF route via which access has also come from the government kitty. So, irrespective of what we hear today, even great numbers may not excite the stock because right. ownership levels have gone higher. So, uh, <coughs> so see, I mean, uh, so uh, we have we have been looking at it more from a, a you know theoretical perspective of where the ROE goes, yeah. and that is how you know you eventually take a you know view on the valuation. Uh, uh, the management change that happened uh, that does bring in a lot of stability and uh, it is Amitabh's, uh, Amitabh coming in okay. and, uh, and 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 uh, you know that gives some assurance on the business strategy etc. Uh, that said, uh, uh, you, you know the bank is not really going to cross the 15 or 15 odd percent of uh, ROE barrier before uh, you know Q1 22. So you 22. Know, yeah. Okay. Uh, so 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 that's how we are looking at it. Uh, so let's let's throw in some bump up because of uh, you know the capital raise and the obvious uh, you know moment momentum it gives to the net interest margins but uh, so we have been uh, having an accumulate rating on the stock uh, uh, ever since we initiated uh, earlier this year uh, we were at 686 on the target price we raised it to 730 uh, we 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 really are not looking at the stock getting re-rated significantly we do believe that uh, you know it, it may tend to stay capped uh, as far as the upside is concerned and what are your price targets on a 12 month basis? Uh, 730 on Access Bank. What is the right way to look at Access Bank? Because it's a pure corporate bank. Little bit of securities business, no insurance, nothing large in terms of uh, any large, uh, you know, third party business. I have, if one looks at ICICI Bank, it has incubated ICICI securities, insurance, and general insurance business. Yeah. If you look at HDFC Bank, the trigger there is that they are planning to take one of the subsidiaries public. Yeah. So if I look at the top tier, uh, can Access Bank be really valued as a pure corporate bank, nothing more, nothing less? And if that is the yeah. case, then what is the right price to book for it? Yeah. So, yes, I mean, they don't manufacture insurance, either general or life. And uh, so we have heard the management uh, speak on this. Uh, uh, what what, what, what uh, the analysts are given to understand is uh, they might be looking at something uh, which may come up. Uh, but but uh, l l let us keep that aside for the moment. See, it used to be a corporate bank. It is no longer a corporate bank. And, and, and the shift started uh, five, six years ago, right? More than six years ago after they started moving more aggressively. So I think that was one of the uh, good strategy shifts which they uh, uh, brought in, uh, sensing the fact that the corporate is going to slow down. 
So in that sense, uh, they have got a very strong retail business now, and that has uh, stood them in good stead uh, during the uh, you know times when when the slippages really went up. That really supported the earnings. So uh, is it a corporate bank? I think it's it's now become more of a, a retail bank. It's becoming more of a retail play. Uh, it's it's all its uh, retail engines, be it the cards, distribution. Uh, uh, the retail assets. I mean, they all are exhibiting very uh, decent growth, very strong growth, uh, more than a decent growth rather. So it's it's become a retail bank. Uh, retail, uh, uh, you know, comprises a, a good amount of of the earnings now. And uh, as far as the insurance is concerned, uh, that's that's something which you know one would wait for for the uh, because again it would involve the regulatory approvals uh, being needed. So. So, so when we reach there, I mean, we'll have a look at the valuations again. Okay. <clears throat> Just quickly, Ravikan, but I want to get your take on RBL. I know you're also looking at that and yeah. we're expecting numbers today. So, RBL, I think uh, management has already flagged four accounts. Mm. Uh, there are going to be slippages, whether they happen now or whether they happen in Q3 or Q4. Uh, that remains to be seen. We are, we have built in about... Uh, 12 odd billion of slippages in this quarter uh, compared to a normal run rate of two and a half, three 3 billion. Uh, well, what you are going to see cross. yeah so what the balance sheet is so small 1200 crores a very large number yeah it's a large number so 1000 or 1200 crore was was the accounts uh, that were flagged so this what include ccd and the others ccd came in later so okay. ccd happened after the previous uh, quarter results were done so four four accounts were flagged and uh, then came uh, the ccd part which is i think less painful compared to the four accounts which were flagged during the uh, quarterly results so uh, you are basically uh, you know one is basically going to look at what happens to these three four accounts that that have already been flagged what you are going to see is uh, the corporate loan book really slowing down so the bank was you know running at 35 odd percent of loan growth that's going to come off with corporate being uh, right sized i would say i mean uh, the 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 downsizing will happen because of the right sizing in terms of exposures which they are doing so corporate loan book is going to slow down uh, uh, retail loan growth is going to be very strong so on a headline basis what we are going to see is uh, you know loan growth being somewhere in the region of 25 to 30% uh, on the lower side rather than on the higher side. So on the balance sheet, I'm not as much worried. I mean, it's a pla it's, it's it's a part of the strategy. Uh, to that extent, the earnings will slow. Uh, what one needs to look at is the commentary. So the management had been maintaining that the loss given default on these accounts is going to be somewhere around 25 to 30 percent, and which is why they will stick to these provisioning levels. Now uh, there is a you know bit of a disbelief that you know this may actually turn out to be higher. So only time will tell. But uh, if if they really stick to that commentary, then obviously I mean we are going to hear them say something more as far as the recovery is concerned. So this is something which uh, one will uh, look forward to. Okay, I've become great having you in the studios. Thank you so Likewise, much for thanks taking for time and speaking with us today. Banks in focus. Uh, let's move on. Let's get you some fresh trading.